Hi guys and welcome to Studio One with me Gregor. So today we want to look at Song Data Import, one of the most powerful features that got first introduced in version 4. What Song Data Import allows you to do is to take any kind of element from another Studio One song, like say the arranger track, maybe the chord progressions from the chord track, the marker track, a specific instrument or mixer state, you name it, and get that into the other song on which you're currently working. For me, this really revolutionized the way I look at song templates and remixing in particular. To demonstrate this, I want to open up the amazing Catfire Sakura song from the demos and tutorials, which is also included in Studio One Artists and Professional, so you can go ahead and try it out for yourself. To open up Sakura from Catfire, simply go to Demos and Tutorials here on the Studio One Start page and open up Sakura Pro version if you have Studio One Professional, which is great because it also includes the chord track that the song heavily utilizes. Or if you have the Artist version, please click here on Sakura Artist. If you don't see Sakura at all, even though you purchase Studio One Artist or Professional, this is probably because you don't have the demo installed yet. In order to change this, please go ahead and click on Studio One up here in the menu bar and go to Studio One installation and make sure that you have the Studio One demos and tutorials installed. Should that not be the case, simply click on the tick box here and click install. And this is what Catfire Sakura looks like after you've opened it up. Okay, without any further ado, let's give this a quick listen. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> All right, so one thing that makes this track really unique is the way it utilized the chord track. So if we're looking at this arpeggio, for instance, here. It's obviously transposing the entire time, but when we open it up, it's actually just a pattern that's repeating constantly. So why do we hear these transpositions? Well, that's because the chord track is set to follow. Once I turn the chord track off, it's really just a repeating arpeggio. But anyway, this is not really what the song data import is about. The usefulness of song data import starts in the moment I decide to make a remix of this song. And I want that remix to have a completely different feel, a completely different vibe. Maybe I want to go for a chill hip hop version of this and then it's not really useful to start, you know, digging around in this song. There's already so much routing that has been taken care of and I'd really like to start out with a more clean slate. And this is exactly where the song data import feature comes into play and shines like the brightest star. So to start, let's just open up a new song here. And uh, let's say we want to go for 90 BPM. So consider that this is 60 BPM slower than the original. Yeah, we're really going for a different vibe here and I'm sure it's going to be fun. To make sure that any of the audio tracks that we're importing are perfectly aligned with our tempo, we also have to tick stretch audio files to song tempo here. All right, that's all we have to do. Click OK. And now we have this blank canvas. Next, we click on song and import song data and just navigate to that song. Open it up and now we're seeing the import song data window here. Now we can choose exactly what we want and need from the original song for our new remix. So to start out, I definitely want the chord track because I know that the majority of sounds of this song are built around the chord track and also this gives me great flexibility when I want to transpose stuff. Then I definitely want the arranger track because the arranger track is so useful when you want to make certain parts shorter and also to always see what the original structure was so that you can then deconstruct that in your remix. And then I want to make a very specific decision on the instruments. I do want to have the bass folder with all the bass instruments in it. I don't want the drums, I want to do that from scratch. 
Then I want to go for the synths and uh, probably a couple of the effects, but I might throw a couple of these out. Then I want the ducking, like the sidechain ducking that Catfire has done through a volume automation of his bus, which is kind of an interesting idea. And uh, yeah, I also want the main and beat filter. I want all the events, obviously, so that I have the groundwork and the fundament of the song in place. I do want the automation, so that stuff like the ducking envelope is uh, imported as well. And finally, I want all of the mixer settings because the song already sounded quite great and then I don't have to do so much work. <laughs> so all that's left to do is click OK and watch the magic unfold. OK, so first things first, let's open up the arranger track. Let's open up the chord track so that we immediately have an overview uh, and jump to the intro part and see how the song sounds like at our new BPM. All right, I can already tell that I want to do without the down sweeps and without these impacts. And that means I probably also don't want to have the riser. But so far, I'm pretty stoked with this. We don't have any drums anymore, as we can see. So let me just grab something from the browser really quickly. Maybe a music loop from the Impact XT kits and sounds that I've uh, contributed for version 4, like the abstract hip hop groove. It sounds a bit too full, but keep in mind, like we learned in the pattern episode, there's actually several variations of this in the same music loop. Okay, so this one is definitely a bit too busy, but something like variation three could work quite well for us. Now one thing that I really like to do is work with alternative step lengths. So for example, this snare here, let's first um, prolong the entire sequence on 32 steps. I want that to be just 12 for the snare. Get that a little accent and play that only 50% of the time, maybe slightly more. And there's already this kind of unpredictable variation now. Play with the velocities a tiny bit here. All right, time for us to listen to this in context now. Let's see what we got. <laughs> I really like this. Okay, so let me just complete this section really quickly with two of my hip-hop loops. The first one is just a couple of triplet hi-hats. And this one to finish. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure you'll agree, completely different vibe of this song and that within a matter of minutes. Last but not least, I want to give you one more example of a completely different use for song data import. Because as you've probably figured, we don't have to import almost everything from a different song, of course. We can also just import very specific track and channel settings that fit our workflow. So one example from my day-to-day -day work are these stems that I got sent right here. And I really like to just embed them in my prepared mix chain. So with song data import, I can do just that. I click here, import song data. I have this little default template prepared right here. 
just select everything from that, maybe except tempo, hit OK, and here's the structure that I want to work with. So I hope that you have a better idea now of how to utilize the song data import and don't be afraid to experiment. You can use it for so many different things. You could have a song that just stores very specific presets of yours, track names and folderings. Just try it out and I'm sure that it can be a massive help to your workflow. Thank you.